Hello guys, Danny here from Dance Tech. In today's video, guys, I'm going to be bringing you my 2017 guide on how to assemble a gaming system. This is going to be a budget system for about 300, 400 pounds. So this uh, actual system is going to revolve around the Radeon RX 460. It's a budget GPU around 105 pounds. We will get you playing some very, very good games at 1080p, 6 FPS, high over high settings. And then for the CPU, the FX4300 quad core CPU. Is it? Is it clocked at 3.8 gigahertz? For the money, it's um, relatively fast, and it is a good, it is good to pair these two together. They are, you know, they are going to work together very well. So yeah, I'm going to be bringing you guys a full guide on how to assemble a system. Going to make it as short as possible. And as always, you find all the links for all these parts in the description. These are a lot more than this. I am going to be linking all them in the description. Just going over them once I get off camera. But yeah, going to make a guide as quick as possible. Uh, nice, short, and concise. Going to go over the parts and. Um, might do a little bit of benchmarking at the end of the video. So without further ado guys, enjoy. So peeps, to get started on yet another full PC build guide for 2017, first up the parts. We have the Gigabyte 78 LMT USB 3 AM3 Plus motherboard, the Corsair VS 450 Watt 80 Plus certified power supply, the Gigabyte RX 460 Windforce OC 2 gig graphics card, AMD FX 4300 3.8 gigahertz quad core processor, a Kingston HyperX 8 gig memory module that runs at 1866 MHz, and a 1TB Seagate SATA desktop hard drive for storage. As for the case, I've gone with the Anadiz AI7, a windowed case with dual chambers. Overall, a good case for this build, sporting five pre-installed fans and room for all kinds of upgrades, ranging from processor cooling to storage. So to get started you want to take all the components out of their boxes and be sure to keep all the various accessories, screw bags and instruction manuals close by for when you need them. I personally like to install the CPU, cooler and RAM onto the motherboard outside of the case first, so that's exactly what we're going to be doing. So first up, place the motherboard onto its box. To install the CPU you want to lift up the arm on the CPU socket and locate the small triangle at the edge of both the CPU and CPU socket. Match them up and plop it in, no force is needed. Once it's in, lower the metal retention arm to secure it into place. As for installing the CPU cooler, the AMD stock cooler is easy enough to install and comes with thermal compound pre-applied, so no need to install your own. The installation requires you to connect both the metal clips on the cooler to the side of the CPU socket, then to lock down the plastic arm to apply the pressure and secure it into place. Don't forget to plug in the 4-pin power connector for the fan to the motherboard. You'll always find a fan header near the top of the board next to the CPU socket. As for the installation of RAM, we've gone with a single 8GB module, so we only have to install a single module today. Installing memory is simple as locating which way to install the modules and pressing them into place, making sure that both the clips lock into place on the module. Be sure to double check the way your memory installs, forcing memory down can damage both the board and the module if inserted the wrong way. Moving on to the installation of your motherboard, first you want to locate the mounting holes on your particular board and remove any additional standoffs that your case may have pre-installed. Leaving ones in that are not in line with your boards may short the computer out when you come to turn it on. Sometimes you'll find you only have to rearrange a couple. Just before we install the board, you want to attach the metal IO shield to the back of your case. This would have come in your motherboard box and can be a little tricky to install. Once you're done verifying standoffs, place your motherboard into the case and screw it into place with the appropriate screws that came with your case. Many larger ATX boards may require more screws to be installed. So now that the motherboard is installed, you want to install the power supply so you can start connecting some of the power cables. Installing a power supply is simple as fixing the unit to the back of the case with the four included screws. The only thing to think about is the way the fan blows the air. In this case, the fan is facing the camera as the side panel has dust filtered vents. Now that the power supply is installed, we can attach some power cables to the computer. This will include the largest connector, the 24-pin power cable to the right-hand side of the motherboard and the 8-pin CPU power cable to the top left of the motherboard. Next up, we're going to be installing the hard drive into a drive sled from the top of the case. You want to slide this out and screw the drive in with the included screws. Once you've done this, you can slide it into the bay and connect the appropriate cables. These include a SATA power cable from the power supply and a SATA data cable from the motherboard box. Gigabyte include two blue 6 gigabit cables with this motherboard. The other end of this data cable plugs into one of the motherboard SATA ports. This case comes with a built-in fan controller, which powers the four 120mm fans in the front and requires a 4-pin Molex plug to power it. Fan with these on the power supply and plug it in. 
Next up we're going to be installing some more cables, these include the KSA's USB 3.0 and 2.0 ports, the audio ports and many smaller cables like the hard drive activity LED, power LED and power and reset buttons. Locoding where all these are can be a little tricky so do feel free to reference your motherboard's manual, this will go over all the internal connectors in detail. However as a guard all these are usually located at the bottom of the motherboard. Moving swiftly ahead, we're nearly done and can get installing the graphics card, however we need to install the exhaust fan which isn't connected to the fan controller at the back of the case like the rest. This can be connected to any available 4 pin fan header on the motherboard. At this point I'd recommend doing a little cable management, tying down cables to ensure they don't get entangled in any moving fans when we switch on the system. Moving on to the graphics card, first you want to remove two metal expansion slot covers from the back of the case, then locate the tab on the end of the PCI Express TAM16 slot and press this down. This board only features a single TAM16 expansion slot so this should be easy enough to locate. Once you've pressed it down you can push the graphics card into the slot. After you've done this you can use the screws from the metal covers to secure the GPU into place. This GPU doesn't require external power so no power cables from the power supply are needed for this component. And that's it, the PC is built and is the moment of truth, does it turn on? Sure does. As this case has a windowed side pan I would recommend spending more time doing some cable management and tying back as many cables as you can. For good practice you can connect two zip ties together and pull all the unused power supply cables together at the back of the case, making sure that none of these are going to interfere with the spinning fans. As for installing the OS and drivers, I've mentioned this many times in many of my build tutorials, however as a quick rundown you want to go to Microsoft's website and download the Windows 10 Media Creation Tool, then burn a Windows 10 image to drive it a DVD or flash drive, and insert it into the newly built PC. You want to boot off this device and install the Windows OS, selecting the drive you want to install the operating system. For many computers with multiple drives, be sure to select the fastest of the drives, such as an SSD. As for the drivers, you want to use the driver disk that came with your motherboard. I recommend installing all the applicable motherboard drivers from that disk, then to go ahead and install the graphics driver second from the other disk that came packaged with your graphics card. Once you've done all this, reboot and get downloading Steam and Origin and start playing them games. Besides, that's what building your own gaming rig is about, enjoying your own creation. So guys, that's my guide on how to assemble a budget gaming system for 2017. This build cost about 350 to 360 pounds. Um, yeah, very nice system. It'll play games very, very well at 1080p, as I mentioned in the intro. And if you do want to watch my review of this GPU, you will find that it is a very good GPU. This variant, uh, the cooling solution and stuff might be a little bit flimsy, but overall it's a good cooling solution. It cools the chip, runs relatively quiet and cool, so I don't really have no complaints there. Um, yeah, it's a good GPU, good system overall. As always, just want to say all the parts will be linked in the good old description box, and yeah, if you guys do have any comments or questions, do put them down below in that comments section. I do tend to get back to a lot of comments. Um, quite overwhelming the amount of comments I get now, with the channel being a little bit larger than what it was, say, a year or two ago. Um, but yeah, I really do try to get back to a lot of them comments that you guys post. So thanks for watching. Please for, feel free to like, comment, and also subscribe. And yeah, I'll see you guys in the next video. Goodbye.